All right, it's time to talk Rutgers football, finally, on the Orlando's Football Network. Probably a little bit later than I had wanted, but still, uh, that's uh, more a case of uh, my special guest, my Rutgers insider, and his very busy schedule, uh, Richie Schneiderite. How's it going, Rich? It's going good. Uh, season's right around the corner, so I'm, I'm just excited to talk some football with some people, So especially you, so it's always a good time. It is, isn't it? This is uh, this is it. Uh, the 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 hope. Uh, obviously, we haven't seen how the team is going to play yet. There's still a lot of unknowns there that we're going to get into. But how's the? Uh, I'm sure the difference in the excitement from the basketball program to the football program completely different mm-hmm. with uh, the way things have gone over the last few years. But is it getting any better as far as football? Are, are the fans starting to now realize that hey, you know what? This is this is a different recruiting class or two this is a different feel it looks like we are getting closer yeah no it's definitely a upward trend um i don't think there's any question there they're top 30 right now for us in recruiting uh, which is huge it's the highest it's been since shiano's return to the banks um in 2019 2020 whatever you want to call it um but yeah on top of that he hired some new coaches he, he stole minnesota's offensive coordinator that atlanta falcons wide receivers coach is, is back on the banks and dave brock um and Pat Flaherty is a 40 year coaching veteran, two time oh, yeah. Super Bowl champ. And he's, he's part of the, the uh, coaching staff too. So they, instead of going with the, the typical young bucks up and comers on, on the coaching staff, he went out and uh, hired some true veteran coaches. So I think there's definitely a little bit of excitement building. That's what I actually am excited about is that because he talks about, uh, and, and I, and now you guys talked about this a uh, video or two ago about whether mm-hmm. it was smart or not for him to call, Rutgers a developmental program. Um, I I don't think this that's going to last real long. I think that's one of those things where hey, why not? Like for instance, and I talked about this during our draft coverage uh, a few months back. Uh, Maryland, they're ahead of us on the football field a little bit, but you take a look and they had three like superstar receivers, and none of them, I don't believe, had got drafted. Now, what does that yeah. tell you about the coaching staff if guys that are that talented are not being coached up? So I think when you go and you sit into the room with, with these kids and you're talking about, well, you want to go here, you want to go there. Well, hey, we're a developmental program. Look at the coaching staff. Look at the guys, Super Bowl rings, so forth. We're going to look at what we did before. We're going to coach you up. We're going to make you a better NFL draft prospect. And I think that does go a long way, at least in the next, for at least the next year or two. Yeah, no, uh, starting with the developmental program thing, like you mentioned, we've we've mentioned it on our podcast. uh, i got to give myself a shout-out real real quick, the Night Report podcast. There you go. Um, If if you haven't checked it out, check it out. But, uh, yeah, no, we mentioned it. And developmental program is not what everyone thinks it is. Everyone thinks it's like, oh, we're still, like, in the lower stages. Like, we're just – we're not there yet. And I'm like, well, that's number one. That's true. Number number two, I think it's more so like you get guys in the program, like you just mentioned, and you actually physically develop them. You've seen it with – look at Christian Braswell. He came in as a projected like number three corner for Rutgers coming out of Temple, transferred in, great, got with Graciano for a couple years. Then he becomes a six-round pick. Now he's making serious noise at uh, at the Jacksonville Jaguars in the preseason. I think he just had a pick last uh, this past weekend. Um, what Christian Isian? Christian Isian was a two-star, un, under underrated kid, a little small for his size at defensive back at safety at five nine. Ended up playing four or five years at Rutgers. I think it was five actually. Um, five years at Rutgers goes undrafted, signs with Tampa Bay. He is now the projected starting nickel corner or nickelback for the uh, for the Tampa Bay Bucks. And it's like hey, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. The guy's done it before. He's done it at the highest of high levels. He was an NFL coach for several years, and now. You're getting a bunch of NFL coaches on staff too. And I think guys like Dave Brock, who's coached Julio, Calvin Ridley, Mohamed Sanu even, um, is going to be able to develop you to that next level. Kurt Chirac has done it at multiple stops at the Power 5 level. He also just produced Mohamed Ibrahim, who was one of the better running backs in college football last season. Um, Pat Flaherty, his record speaks for itself. Like I mentioned before, yeah. two-time Super Bowl champ with the Giants. 40 years of coaching experience. Um how long is he going to be on the banks? That's a, that's a big question sure. mark. But but the fact that he's he's at Rutgers currently and he's coaching is is huge and he's produced arguably the best Giants offensive line ever with Chris Snee, Rich Siebert, Sean O'Hara. Uh, I'm missing names. Uh, David Deal, but uh, that that was that was the two time Super Bowl champ. Yes. So, I mean, yeah, I I think that it's definitely a developmental program. They're going to get you in. 
um, they're going to develop you over to four to five years, and they're you have a pretty good shot at the NFL with most of these guys uh, coaching you. Yeah, uh, and again, you've got the proven track record. It's not all talk, and that's the thing that I think mm-hmm. goes a long way with these kids, uh, especially because they don't really know. I mean, they need to be yeah. educated, and especially if they're sitting in the room with their <laughs> parents, which they usually are, you know, mm-hmm. uh, they can probably uh, understand that even more. Um, let's talk a little bit about – actually, I'm going to pop up uh, your – night report page here so this is the rival rutgers.rivals.com website so if any viewers out there have yet to subscribe uh what's the easiest give me a quick uh selling pitch uh we have everything Rutgers. um i know we're obviously talking football today but we have basketball as well wrestling uh, recruiting coverage um i think we actually have the best staff in out of every Rutgers beat and that's no no hatred towards the other guys. I just think we cover it better than anyone. We have everything from rumors to to visits to commitments to breakdowns of film, breakdowns of games, breakdowns of tape, breakdowns of recruits. Um, our YouTube our podcast is the number one highest rated Rutgers podcast on the web. Um, several hundred um, five star reviews, which is nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and our message board. We have the best community on on the entire internet, in my opinion. Not just Rutgers related, but just every college fan base. Um, it's a tight knit group. It's growing bigger by the day. We added over 100 plus subscribers this past weekend with our little promo that we ran. Um, and it's just <laughs> sometimes they, they go a little overboard with some of their predictions uh, and stuff. But yeah, but well, they they are the best group in the world. I love them to death, and uh, I, I love everything we do. It. And if you love Rutgers, this is this is the place for you. You could talk anything Scarlet Knights, like I just said, any sport, even recruiting coverage too from the high school level and. It's just uh, it's it's just the best place to be if you're a Scarlet Knights fan. Now, uh, so right here it says uh, to be a part of the community, eight thirty three a month. Question: You pay Shoot. for that, you get not just Rutgers, but you get everything at Rivals, or is that a different? Uh, no, that's that's just Rutgers. Okay. Um, the other package, you I think it's like a hundred and twenty for the year. So I think it turns out to be like ten dollars a month or something like so that. So a couple more bucks, and you get everything. You get every uh, every message board, every article from every network. Um, but yeah, for ours, actually, there, there's a promo code actually going on still. It's TKR30. So if you want to just give us a try, that's a free 30 day trial, and you could you could check us out. And if if you don't like it, I, I would love to still hear your feedback of why you're canceling. Um, I try to reach out to everyone that's ever canceled and try to just say like, hey, I'm, I'm just curious what the reasoning is, and see if I can if I can better the site or better myself even. Absolutely. As a, re- as a reporter. So, yeah, I mean, um, definitely we don't give know it a everything. try, though. Nah, I don't know. Well, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's dive in. And, wh- and by the way, while we do this, I'm also – I'm not going to switch over to the yardlads.com depth chart page for Rutgers. Yeah. Go for it. So uh, – because there might be a few guys that might, might not even be on here, especially for the late guys. But matter of fact, I actually told them about – because they didn't have Jackson – Jaquay okay. Jackson up there about a week hmm. ago. And I, and I, because gotcha. these late ones, especially with the transfer portal, obviously just goes nuts. And I'm looking <laughs> here and it's not bad. I mean, really, when I, because I was looking at, I interviewed, uh, I think it was Brian Matthews um, okay. for Auburn. And that depth chart is like just Imagine. every orange represents like freshmen or transfers. And it's like half the thing is, is, is orange, most of them transfers. Um, not the case for Rutgers. A couple of transfers here and there. What did they do the best job of? Would it be the wide receiver uh, position? Um, actually, I'd probably say de- defensive back. Defensive um, back, yeah, yeah, that's true. They yeah. added they added Flip Dixon, who was a multi year starter for Minnesota. Kind of a shock to the portal, to be honest, for Minnesota fans. Um, no one really saw it coming, but from what we were told, he kind of. Uh, so what they were starting to do is he started to gain a little weight and get a little bigger. And they're kind of like, all right, start shifting them towards the line of scrimmage a little more, play that hybrid new, new yeah. age hybrid linebacker type role. Now he comes to Rutgers and he's, he's the starting safety. So it's, he's back to safety. Um, he's worked with DC uh, defensive coordinator, Joe Harris Simiak at Minnesota for several years. So there's a little connection there. Um, but I think he's going to be a full blown stud. I, I, I love his game and he probably hits harder than anyone else on the team. And that's, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Who doesn't love that when it comes to football? I know you got to be careful nowadays because the flags and the penalties. Yeah, sure. But, but yeah, no, he hits harder than anyone. He he loves the game. He loves the contact. Um, Eric Rogers, another transfer um, coming in. 
South Jersey guy. Um, I actually we had him pretty highly rated out of high school. I don't know what happened or whatever uh, to, for him not to end up at the Power Five level. Ends up at um, <clears throat> Northern Illinois for a couple years. Um, he's got two years left. I think he's going to be a great cornerback and a good compliment to uh, to Mac, Max Melton, who also returns. Not a transfer, mind you, but one of the better DBs in the Big Ten. Yep. And then they added another cornerback in uh, Charles Amonqua. Um, I in a uh, out of where the heck did he come from from the mac as well i believe um from akron uh brothers on the team new jersey native hillsborough high school guy uh it just i didn't expect them to add this many defensive backs via the portal because i thought they were kind of already pretty solid there yeah but they made this from like solid to now a super strength of the team so um i think this unit's gonna be pretty good uh but yeah that's that's probably where they hit the portal the hardest and uh, we can kind of start on offense with those wide receivers because maybe, like you said, maybe it wasn't a need, but it certainly was a need at wide receiver. I mean, yeah. I, I could not imagine what this group would look like without a couple of these transfers. So thank goodness. And maybe this was the plan all along. Who knows? But whatever mm-hmm. the case, that that's big to get Brantley and Jackson in there. Yeah, no, for sure. You lost um, your top, what was it, top three receivers, I think it was, and Sean Ryan, um, Aaron Cruikshank, both of them are now in NFL teams, and um, Shameen Jones, too. So you lost your top three guys, so you have to replace them somehow. Um, And if you're not getting your guys developed quick enough, if you're not getting those freshmen and sophomores developed quick enough, you're going to have to hit the portal, and that's, that's just how it works nowadays. Um, You don't even have to develop guys anymore. You can just pick up one of the lower programs, guys. And that's kind of what happened here with uh, Nassim Brantley. He's a a New Jersey guy, senior transfer, had some pretty good uh, years at Western Illinois and and Sacred Heart, too. Um, And now he's going to go to the big leagues and see if he can do it there. Um, Jaquay Jackson's another one. He's a D2 guy, D2 All-American, mind you. Uh, I think he had 13, 1,400 yards last season. It's a big jump for these guys, but I I do think with skill positions you either you either have the skill or you don't. So that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's as crazy as uh, saying going from offensive line at D two to offensive yeah. line in the Big Ten. Yeah. But big boys. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, that's that's a big difference there. But then then I see J D Dorenzo last year at transfer going from Sacred Heart to Rutgers best lineman, and it's like True. all right, well, I, my whole theory is just out the, out the door now. So, <laughs> but uh. Yeah, no, definitely wide receiver. They had to, they needed to add a couple bodies, and they did. And we'll see if it translates or not. Is Long considered their number one guy right now? Still, <clears throat> um, I'd argue Jaquay Jackson. Okay, personally, I think Long's right there. I think he's a really good player. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they they kind of work this because Jaquay did play some slot last year, but for the most part, he was on the outside. I guess Chris Long could technically play slot too, but he's kind of got a bigger build, so I probably wouldn't put him there either. Uh, Christian Dremel is a guy who's been making some serious noise. Really, at the slot, he um he ended up earning spring game spring award for Rutgers for most improved offensive player, and uh, he's kind of rode that um into training camp as well. And he's he's a guy who's become a solidified target for uh for the Scarlet Knights uh in that position. Interesting. Well, they need it. They definitely need some guys to step up their game. And oh, yeah. uh, Rochelle, does he become like the <clears throat> the next gadget guy? Sort of like Crookshank, you know, we could have him do a little bit of, you know, this and that. Yeah, um, he's still a little behind, and that's I don't know if that's because of this or not, but you know this. He played running back last year, which was kind of out of necessity when Sam Brown went down uh, because they, they really didn't have healthy bodies. Um, so they, they tried Rochelle at running back, and he's dangerous when it comes to being in space. Is he built like a running back? Absolutely not. He's built like a slot receiver. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's a couple ways you could definitely use him this season. Um, he's a high school quarterback who was recruited to play wide receiver at Rutgers, and then they put him at running back freshman year. So the, the kid's a little <laughs> all His head's over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely going to be an adjustment year for him, in my opinion. Um, okay. I think you could still use him on end arounds and Cruikshank ways, like put him in a backfield just for, for fun and see what yeah. he can do. But uh, get him the ball in space, and that's where he's the most dangerous. And um, that's, what, that's why he's uh, fighting for the punt and return and kick return spot. So. Makes sense there. All right. The running game uh, is uh, in good hands, especially if Samuel Brown stays healthy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would guess coming off the injury, they want to keep him as fresh as possible. And and that that should happen. They're they're pretty deep at that spot, right? Yeah, they're being extremely cautious. So uh, he comes back from injury. He's going to be their top guy, in my opinion. 
Um, Aaron Young also comes back from injury. Uh, he's a former, I think he had him as a four star, if not four star, very high three star guy. Um, was a long time Michigan State commit until they flipped him, but uh, he's going to return. Kyle Manung guy, I think he had 300, 400 yards. He's always been solid at best. Yeah. Um, so it's it's good to have guys like that. And then you have a couple mixtures of, of dudes in Al Shadi Salam, who's a speedster, smaller guy. Deshaun Benjamin's the new freshman is making some noise. He's probably a legitimate like five eight, and that's the biggest concern with him. But he's just so hard to tackle. Um, he's he's quick. He's actually got a little muscle to him. Um, I don't I don't want to call him a muscle hamster, but I feel like that's like the, the go to nickname for guys his size. Okay. Um, and guys that ha- have his frame. So I, I think he has a potential to play a role this year as well. So that that room is uh, pretty deep, like you said, just okay. pending health. And Benjamin, he's a true freshman, correct? Yeah, true freshman out of uh, Pahoke, Florida. Okay. Yeah, that's. I mean, that is something we will, we we should definitely talk about, uh, which we will. Uh, and that's uh, the recruiting, which is just crazy, um, <laughs> but all over the place. And I think that's a good thing. But before we get into that, all right, Gavin Wimsat. So I'm sure a lot of people were wondering why we didn't start with him, but it's understandable. I, fact is we're really just not going to know right until he gets out there and starts playing whether or not we see improvement yeah no, i completely agree um this this defense is going to be really good this year so it's hard to gauge based on practice <laughs> yeah, because that's like, true too yeah I, I i don't think it's a secret like greg said it multiple times in press conferences the big 10 network was there the other day they said it the defense won the day the defense won the day the defense is going to be great this year in my opinion now <sighs> That's the that's the thing. How good is the offense going to be? They're going against a great defense, so it's it's tough to judge. Um, I do think Gavin Wimsett is is going to. Well, I shouldn't say I think he is the guy now because Greg announced it for the first time in a couple years that he's announced the quarterback quarterback one before the season. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's it's just like we've seen Art Sikowski in practice look like a full blown stud. Then he gets to game day and it's like, what happened? Yes. <laughs> Now, uh, now you have to see if Gavin Wimsett's either is he going to be like Sikowski where he looks decent in practice or good in practice, and then goes to the game day and it's like, who is this guy? That's not Gavin. Like, <laughs> or if he turns into a, a good quarterback, it's all going to come down to um, it's going to come down to the offensive line at the end of the day. They need to protect. If they can't protect, then uh, that's when it all falls apart and it all unravels. Yeah, because yeah, because he could have you, that could be an excuse if he doesn't play up to our standards well the offensive line hasn't done well but talk about the line then next and uh yeah they've had some you know important starters if you want to call them that have exited but fact is uh, there's a few new bodies who's the who's the centerpiece do they have a top guy yeah it's holland pierce by far um i think he's one of the better big 10 offensive tackles he's going to move from right to left so I know people see that and hear that and they're like, yeah, whatever. It's no adjustment. I'm like, yeah, he's now he's going to go against the best of the best. So yeah. now there's definitely an adjustment. Um, and they're also going to move uh, Curtis Dunlap over from right guard to left guard. I'm assuming it's probably just comfortability and they know each other so well that it's like, hey, they both played right side this year. That's flipped on the left side this year. Um, so I think those two are definitely going to be pretty good. Uh, Ireland Brown, former defensive tackle who moved to offensive line, I think two years ago at this point, um, has been a really solid center. Um, nothing crazy. I don't think he's top tier Big Ten center, but I don't think he's bottom tier either. I think he's right in the middle of the pack. And then the right side's the, the weird concerns. Okay. There's, there's a, a couple battles going on between Mike Chifani, uh, who started a couple games last year, and then uh, Kobe, a.k.a. Kwabena Asamoah, I believe I pronounced that correct. Um he started the last three games last year at left, at left guard. So they're okay. kind of fighting for that guard spot. And then um, Tyler Needham, uh, redshirt sophomore, is going against uh, Kamar Missouri, who I think actually might be a redshirt sophomore too. Um, he's a Missouri's a converted defensive lineman over to offense. And Tyler Needham's played offense his whole time at the, on the banks. So they're fighting for that right tackle spot as well right now. And that's the big question marks is that right side of the line. The left side, even if you want to combine Ireland Brown in there, there's a combined, I want to say 60, 70 total games started total between the three of them. Um, it's that right side. Like Tyler Needham's not – I don't think he's ever started, to be honest. Missouri's never started a game. Um, Chifani started, like I said, a couple last year. Yeah. He's he's a transfer from Colorado State who also was a defensive tackle at one point. 
Um, and Kobe was a true freshman last year. And she was only going to go in a year two. It's it's a major concern that right side of the line, and if they can hold or not. If they can hold, great. If they can't, that's where things Trouble. could just yeah. get yeah get really ugly. Sutton, what's his health situation? I'd be shocked if I, I I love him. I think he's the nicest kid in the world. I think he's fighting like heck to uh to get out on the field again. I don't know if he'll ever touch the field again. Uh, it's for significant snaps. Maybe a late game they might put him in just to get him a couple reps. Um, like I said, he's he's been pushing. He touched uh, the field for the first time this officially, I guess, um, this past spring at the spring game, and it was the first time he's touched the field in like two and a half years. Like yeah. it's it's tough. Um, he completely tore up his knee, and I don't want to say like it's it's tough to walk, but like if I had those injuries, I'd I'd give up football completely. Especially with a degree at Rutgers. Yeah. yeah. You get you get your degree yeah. and, and you're good. But I, I he's pushing. He is trying he's trying to get back out there. And if he can, that would be ginormous for this team. But I just I personally don't see it happening. Okay. I have to ask you before we leave the offensive line, because mm-hmm. we talked about this um when he was a big four star commit mm-hmm. that he's gonna need time. He's just, he's got to get in that weight room. It's going to take a few years. He's kind of been the forgotten man. So how much longer do we wait for Jacob Ballon to develop? So he uh, completely ripped up his knee as well. This, this offseason. He did. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he's, he's been um, out of commission. I would, I'll call it. Um, yeah. Greg talked about it back in July at his, uh, his annual golf outing. They just for charity. Uh, he said Jacob Allen got some significant knee surgery. If if you go on his Instagram, I don't know what his his uh, at is, but he um, there's it's a pretty mean scar from the top of the kneecap to the bottom of the kneecap. It's uh, it's ugly. It's uh, it's going to take some time for him to get back out there. But um, he he uh, he was making progress before that, which which kind of stinks to hear. But um, yeah, he's he's a, a ways away still. Okay. Uh, we didn't talk too much about the tight ends. So Langan, we know he's going to be the guy again. Uh, we know he can do a good job. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Is there another level, by the way, for Langdon as a tight end now that he's been the tight end and he's not thrown all over the place at running back and quarterback and all that kind of stuff? Or or, or do you think this is this is what we get? You, you don't really see him as developing like into a pro prospect. I, I think he, he has a chance to get a little bit better, but I, I think he he's kind of is what he is at this point. Um, he's been moved around from quarterback. He's kind of played running back, I guess, if you want to consider yeah. that. <laughs> He just he would play quarterback, but he'd probably run the ball like twenty <laughs> yeah, times, right? Um, almost like that Lamar Jackson type role. But uh, yeah, no, he's uh, he's solid. They they also brought in Sean Bauman out of uh, Maine, who also has a connection to Joe Harris Simiak, the former Maine head coach, and now Rutgers DC. Um, they recruited him out of high school. He has pretty high PFF grades if you look at him. Okay. Um, but but he only had three hundred fifty yards last year for Maine. Uh, that was in eight games played, so he also is coming off an injury. But uh, I think he'll be tight end slash 1B slash 2, if you want to call it that. Oh, okay. Because uh, Kirk Shiraka likes to run a ton of t- two tight end sets, and I, I think that's kind of going to help in terms of uh, blocking purposes too. All right, sounds good. Uh, let's talk now about the defensive side, and this is the strength, as you said. So it all starts up front, and – I remember talking, having you, you know, talk about Hamilton, especially mm-hmm. in the. Well, well is he going to make the the full time move to football, and mm-hmm. and then when he does, what can that do for his, you know, football career? Um, has he developed the way that you thought he would develop? And does he? How much more of another gear does he have? Um, I actually thought he was going to be like a full blown stud on the interior year one and then he went back to wrestling lost some weight gained some weight lost some weight when he was b- bouncing back and forth now he's full-time football so okay. he he does have a chance Just this to year make, first time yeah yeah okay. so he so he does have a chance to make some noise um we'll see what happens there uh i think he's definitely being pushed a lot because there is a, a lot there's a lot of talent in that defensive line yeah. especially on the interior they brought in isaiah Iton out of uh mississippi who's just a massive human being in general I know Rutgers fans were raving about him on social media when they made a post, uh, just kind of welcoming him because you saw him without pads and it's like, <laughs> that guy doesn't have pads on. What the heck? Like, yeah. oh my god! <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's massive. So we'll see what happens. I can't imagine him not being a starter, if at least a key contributor. So that's one. 
Uh, Mayan Ahanatu has played significant snaps last yeah. year. This year, he'll he'll do the same. Um, he's just a veteran of the group. Troy Rainey's making some noise. Um, another converted offensive lineman and defensive tackle, Renee Conga. So they, they have a lot of different options there that they can throw at you. Um, and then in terms of third down stuff, they're probably they can run out with like three edge or four edge rushers instead of defensive tackles because yeah. they they have that many talented edge ro- edge rushers. Um, I know we were talking about defensive tackle, but I, I got to point out the fact that Aaron Lewis was number one in quarterback hurries last year. Oh yeah, Wesley Bailey was this team sack leader, and you get Muhammad Toure, who was the team sack leader in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty back from injury. So that unit is going to be uh, freaky good, in my opinion. Who would be considered because most Rutgers fans, they follow the team, know those guys. Who 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 are the who are the next group of edge rushers that we may need to keep an eye on? The young guys that are going to hopefully make a name for themselves soon. Kenny Fletcher is a guy that I want to say our boards are familiar with because I've been raving about him for quite some time, and he was just rail thin last year at a defensive end, but he still played some solid snaps and still managed to get to the quarterback pretty easily. Um, he packed on some, some muscles, so he's one to keep a close eye on. Okay. Uh, Jordan Thompson, he's, he's packed on a ton of pounds. I think it's, I think I did the math the other day. It was like something like 35 pounds over the off season. So he's up to like the 260 range. Um, so he's starting to push towards like that, uh, that verge of where Greg likes to shift him to the inside, but he's still on the outside and I still think he can make some noise as well. Um, both freaky athletes, both really, uh, really good players and i i think this is this is it for them this is year two slash red shirt sophomore so year three for thompson um but yeah i, w- I would keep a guy on both of those two all right and then linebacker so uh this is usually a strength uh for shiano and jennings mm-hmm. uh he's gonna be the focal point of that group but uh talk about because Tere is again even though maybe the depth chart has him as a linebacker we know he's an edge mm-hmm. rusher so uh, how many actual linebackers are going to be two that they're pretty much going to throw out there on their base? Uh, yeah. and, um, how's Moses Walker coming along? Yeah. So, so their base is most likely going to throw two out again. They did it all last season and that's, it was kind of out of necessity last season, but I think the game's starting to translate more towards that yes. where it's, it's, yes. it's going to be another defensive back instead of that linebacker. Cause you need coverage. Yep. Um, but yeah, Dion's gotten a lot faster. He's quicker. Um, and that's, that's huge for him. Uh, because he's going to try to, he, he did pretty good last year as his first full year starter. Uh, I'd admit when, uh, when I'm wrong and I, I wasn't too confident in him, um, being out there, but he proved me wrong. He looked pretty solid. And I think this year he'll kick it into another gear. Uh, Tyreen Powell's ceiling is extremely oh, yeah. high. Um, I think he's just starting to grasp of how the concept of how good he could be. Um, so he'll be really good as well. And Moses Walker, uh, is back from injury and he's, he's fully good to go. He's, um, probably I'd argue linebacker three slash four, depending on Muhammad two situation. Cause he's going to bounce around a lot. Um, I know I talked to two the other day and he basically said like, I'm a defensive player. So I was like, uh, uh-huh. like, so you're Johnny Langan of the defense. Like, all right. Yeah. But uh, in reality, they're going to move him between linebacker and edge rusher. And heck, he might even, like I said before, in that, that third down scheme, that pass rush scheme, they might even throw him on the interior and just let him let him go, let him rock. All right. And then uh, secondary, uh, you mentioned uh, a couple of names already. Max Melton, uh, how good could he be? Is he is, – have we seen the best of him yet? Um, I thought last year we would have saw the best of him. And I even argued that he was probably the best player on the team last training camp. Um, that's changed a little bit because this past season, he, he did have some struggles. He struggled yeah. uh, quite a bit, especially when put on the Island in one-on-one coverage. Um, I thought he would be super successful, but he really wasn't. He was hit or miss. There were some times where he'd give up a big play. There's other times where, where he would make the play. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think he's going to be in for a pretty good year. Uh, he kind of knows that. And as long as he's, pretty damn good uh, i think there's a really good shot he could be in the league next year as even a day two pick maybe sure um robert longer we just talked to yesterday at camp uh he's very excited for this season um the safety unit concerns me a little bit because i know like i said before i like flip dixon i think he's really good it's that other spot between shaquan loyal or desmond igmanosin um okay. they're kind of battling it out a little bit to see who can win that job. Uh, two totally different players. Igmanosin's almost built like a linebacker, kind of, <clears throat> where Shaquan Loyal is a little bit smaller and a little bit quicker, too. Uh, but I, I think they'll end up rotating those guys back and forth. And then uh, Eric Rogers, the transfer from yeah. um, 
from the Midwest, from the Mac. I, I think he's going to be a really good player. Um, I shouldn't even say from the Midwest because he's from Jersey technically, but uh, <laughs> I, I think he's going to be a, a solid cornerback two slash cornerback three, depending on the scheme they're running. And uh, I think this unit, it's going to come down to that secondary. I think they're, they're going to pressure the heck out of the quarterback, uh, whether that be from the edge, from the interior, or even the linebackers. Um, but for the most part, I think this secondary, it's, it's going to come down to them to see if uh, how good they can really be. And Abraham, you know, he's made a lot of uh, big plays for them. I know he does not either have the size, but where does he fit? Is he basically slot? That's 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 what he's going to play. And and how how uh, important is he in that secondary? He's definitely an important piece. Um, not last year, but the year before, he um, he ended up getting all PFF Big Ten. He had a really good year playing yes. on the outside and. Again, that was another guy that concerned me a little bit because of his size playing the on the outside. I was like five yeah. nine, five ten maybe playing on the outside, and I was like, all right, well you get a tall receiver, you're you're kind of kind of a little screwed there. Um, but no, he he played pretty well in twenty twenty one or twenty twenty yeah twenty twenty one. Um, looked solid, and then twenty twenty two, he I don't want to say he regressed, but he he was just a little bit quieter. Okay. Uh, we didn't hear much from him, so I think this is the year. He either uh, it's make or break for him. Um, He's still playing outside. Uh, he rotates, okay. so it's it's kind of uh, depending on scheme. It's it's based on that for the most part. No more Corsac, so this is a big blow. Uh, it's he's so, he's gonna be so missed. So who's the new punter? Uh, Flynn Appleby. He is uh, also also an Aussie, an Australian. Okay. Um, I think there's not enough talk about this, that Corsac's gone. I, I thought Corsac changed the game for Rutgers quite a bit. Yeah. Um, he, he was a guarantee to flip the field no matter when you need it, needed it. Um, and Flynn, Flynn's solid. I don't think he's Corsac's level or anywhere near that, but that's not a, that's not a, a slight towards Appleby either because sure. Corsac might have been one of the, <laughs> the best college football punters of all time. Yeah. Um, multiple Ray guy semi-finalist finalist ray guy award winner last year um yeah i it's it's going to be interesting because i i know you were people were counting on corsac to flip the field and like shiano counted on him and i don't know if you're getting that out of appleby it's it's going to be intriguing yeah. to see what happens because this is a totally different punter and uh i i i don't know it's gonna well be, you just uh, hope that the team is now better and yeah so they won't you don't have to use the punter. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what you hope yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, speaking of special teams, I did want to mention he did name a starting kicker, and it was not the guy I thought it would be. It was uh, Jay Patel, um, oh. redshirt freshman out of Piscataway. Uh, okay. A little shocking because Jude ran the, the whole kickoff or kick unit yeah, last year. Um, Jude's still going to, Jude Makatami's still going to run the, uh, the kickoff unit for this year, but okay. Jay Patel is going to be the, uh, the kicker for Rutgers this year. And I, I think that's a good decision. It's interesting because I think Patel's the more accurate kicker, but I think Makatami's the more powerful kicker. So okay. that's, that's where it kind of differs. Do you want a guaranteed from 30 in, or do you want like a guy that can hit or miss 30 in, but can also yeah, hit that 50 They can use all the so. field goals, the easy ones. I yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. It, it, special teams is completely different. New long snapper too. Like it's, this is going to be a weird year for special teams. No Krukshank either. So yeah. you need a new, new return, man. And they blocked how many kicks last year? Two or three or two or three. I think it was three. Cause I know Max Melton had one. Um, I think Timmy Ward had one too. Someone yeah, else. They had, had that one, one that uh, they didn't scoop and score. That was a real downer. Oh. The Iowa game, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 And that really and screwed had, things up. Yeah. Get an end zone there, and it's a totally different team. Yes. And then I remember the very next time they blocked it, they did scoop and score. And it might have been, yeah. I don't know if it was the same guy or it just seemed like it. It was like, okay, yeah, well, now, now, you, now you learned your lesson. Okay. Yep. Before I let you go, uh, let's talk about the, uh, so, so let's talk about uh, the recruiting. Um, first of all, quarterback. So this is mm -hmm. this is gonna be really big because all right, we all are hoping Wimsat is the man, no question <clears> about it. But th there's a lot of excitement uh about about a particular quarterback that's coming in next year's class. And they also have another quarterback in this year's class that we're not really gonna see much of, uh Shepard, but you know, he seems like he has some interesting traits. 
develop a couple of years. We'll see what happens there. So talk about the future of quarterback for Rutgers. Um, yeah, I mean, if Wimsett's not the guy, AJ Sarais might be. Um, I've had I've got an opportunity to watch him three, four times already this uh, this off season, and he's continued to impress me every time. Um, I think he kind of got a little bit screwed by the Elite Eleven because he performed really well at the one, uh, the regional camp over in uh, State College, okay, uh, Pennsylvania. I thought he was probably the best quarterback there. Um, but he ended up not getting the nod. They ended up giving it to the Penn State quarterback commit and Ethan Grunkmeyer, which whatever, that's fine. But uh, I, th- I thought AJ Sarace did pretty well this offseason. He got a good build. He's he's a legitimate like I want to say six three, six four, two two fifteen around there. He's he's built like a tank. Um, he throws the ball really well in the run. He's pretty accurate and he's got the co- the football background. His dad is the head coach of Princeton, so that definitely yes. helps. Long time head coach Princeton, mind you, um, who's won quite a few games. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I was very impressed with him. Um, I think he might end up being the guy, maybe not year one, which would be 2024, but maybe year two in 2025. Um, I never liked the idea of throwing a freshman quarterback out there, sure. especially because even nowadays, uh, someone did an article the other day, it was 68% of starting quarterbacks in power five are transfers. So if Wimstat's not the guy, I think you have to go hit the portal pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think that would kind of be the future of the quarterback room. That's kind of how it works. You have to maybe pick up a freshman, develop him for two years. Yep. Hopefully he's that guy by year three, but in the meantime, you still need a quarterback. So I think you have to hit the portal. Eight out of the 14 big 10 teams are transfer quarterbacks. Yep. So it's, that's just the new age of a uh, college football. But there is something that, I mean, you do, I, I agree with you. This, you look at this kid, Sarace, and there's just, you, you kind of feel it that, hey, you know what? Maybe this is different. Maybe this, uh, and I know Wimsat came with a lot of fanfare and all that, but I think mm-hmm. Wimsat actually came with more fanfare than maybe Sarace is going to. And I don't know, maybe it's a good thing, or even Satowski. Um, <laughs> but I just, yeah, it seems to be something here with this kid that you just, you know, you know I think I think this, he may not have all the intangibles that you're, that you're looking for, but there's other things that count, and uh, he seems to have it. And I think uh, I think they're going to be in good hands when he eventually takes over. Yeah, and uh, he's going to try to enroll early, so he'll be here in January, and uh, we'll get to see him then. So we'll see what happens in uh, spring 2024. Jeez. And let's hope Wimsat holds him off as soon as as, yeah. as long as possible. <laughs> That's what we want to yeah. see. So that would be the ideal situation. And so next year's class uh, looking pretty good because this year's class, I mean, the class for next year. Yeah. I mean, just hearing about all of the d- the different regions, it's crazy. I mean, I got people who are asking me, what is this all about? I mean, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, I think it's a good thing without yeah. a question. Um, they're hitting Florida hard. I think they have, what was it? Six Florida kids. And that's the most of any state for the recruiting class, which that's like a Greg Schiano thing. Like he's always yeah. recruited Florida really well. Um, he was down he stayed in Florida after being let go by Tampa. Um, he coached at Berkeley prep, which is one of the premier Florida prep schools. Um, but yeah, no, you got New Jersey, New York, you stay in the, the Northeast. Interesting that there's no Pennsylvania, but they moved even farther West when that's where you get that big 10, uh, kind of connection. They hit Wisconsin for two commits. Um, they hit, uh, no, I'm sorry. Wisconsin for one commit. No, I was right. Never mind. I, I take it back. It was Wisconsin for two commits. They hit Michigan for two commits. Um, technically, I guess one commit now because Gabriel Winowich is transferring from Michigan to New Jersey to play with AJ Sarais for okay. senior year. Awesome. So, so that's, that's huge. And he's automatically a top 10, uh, New Jersey prospect, in my opinion, as soon as he gets here. Um, I actually think he's going to be in New Jersey next week, starting next week. Okay. Um, they've also hit North Carolina pretty hard. Yes. And that's where, uh, Dave Brock comes into play. He coached at North Carolina for a couple years. He's got a ton of connections down there. Um, Maryland, uh, who else is there? Another state? No, Ohio. So Georgia, you're kind of just going all over, yeah. and you're extending that uh, that state of Rutgers. If the New Jersey, uh, big North New Jersey kids, big name New Jersey kids don't want to stay, mind you, they did get one. I think Kaj Sanders, four star, top five New Jersey kid, um, to stay on board. If they don't want to stay, you go elsewhere, and then you just keep extending that region more and more. And uh, Florida kids is probably the way to go i know they're a little wishy-washy when it comes to a verbal commitment but there's freak athletes down there how do you not oh, recruit yeah. the state everyone recruits the state yes like, you kind of have to so yeah. 
uh, we'll wait and see what happens. But this this class has the uh, potential to be a good one. And the, and that also has to do a lot too with the new <clears throat> staff and 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 yeah. the, the recruiting, not just the, the coaching, but some of the recruiting that they're doing. So yeah, yeah, of course. And you um, mentioned Watson's a big one, right? Yeah, Watson arguably is the top recruiter of of this recruiting class. Yeah. He's, <laughs> He snagged uh, linemen from Miami and Ty Queen and Ty Cool Hill Lumen, the Lumen brothers, as a, as I call them. And uh, they Miami wanted them bad. They're they're down in Miami right now, playing at uh, I think it's Miami Norwind High School. So that was a big one. Uh, he went out to Ohio and got Elijah King, who a lot of programs out there projected to stay out there with like Northwestern or Iowa or one of those programs. Minnesota was in there. And he ended up snagging him. And uh, they're still very much in it for uh, a guy in Caden Brown, who's New York's top uh, defensive end as well. So he's uh, he's been recruiting at a different level this year, um, Marquis Watson. And I, he, he earned his contract extension for sure. <laughs> yeah. Before I let you go, prediction. What do you think? Bowl season? It's uh, They got to win all the, all the wonderful games, of course. That's, that's a yeah. given. <clears throat> but they're probably just going to need one upset, right? Yeah, need need uh one. Yeah, if they win, I'm th- out of conference. Um, <laughs> uh, hold on, <laughs> um, out of conference. Uh, it's it's tough. It's Temple, Wagner, Virginia Tech. Yeah. Wagner Wagner hasn't won a game in I don't know how long. Yeah, uh, that's... Temple. They should be Virginia yes. Tech. Uh, that's the question mark. That's the big one. I really don't know about that one. They still should um, win that game, though. Brent Prize in year two. Oh, Brent Brent Prize in year two. So I don't I don't know. I, I really don't know because they added a lot of transfers as well too. Yeah. So that's that's the real tough part. Um, and then in terms of in conference, you open up against a team that I, I don't really know what to expect from. There's been a lot of turmoil with that team. They've had a lot of issues in the past uh past couple months, and um. They're either gonna it's either gonna they're gonna rally around that and they're gonna be the the team to beat or the team that's no one wants to play or they're gonna be in complete turmoil still and just fall apart. So you never know. And that is see, the team that Rutgers seems to play the most competitive out of all the other big Big Ten teams. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just kind of wait and see what happens there. Yeah. So your prediction? What do you think? Bowl or not? I'm gonna go with no. I think that they're. Uh, I th- I think they're only gonna get four wins. To be honest with you. Um, Maybe five outside shot of five with uh, Indiana, who's the probably the lone Big Ten team besides Northwestern that they can beat. Um, I think Wisconsin's tough because they're projected to win the West. Um, Michigan projected to win the conference. Yeah. Uh, Penn State's right there this year. Uh, Ohio State's always Ohio State. Iowa's Iowa. They they don't the, the scheduling makers did them no favors yeah. whatsoever. It's... But they never they really never do so. That's why, again, they have to win all the games that you're supposed to win. And they, and if they do that, then they need one upset. So, yeah. So um, if they if they win the five or the, the first three, they should be three and one, four and one with Michigan and Wagner. And then got to beat Indiana for five and then six. Win those home games, Michigan State, yeah. Maryland, that kind of thing. That's it. Yeah. And it's Maryland's got a good team this year, too. So it's it's just it's so tough. This Big Ten conference is insanely tough every single season. And it's it's not changing anytime soon. It's getting tougher, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure when we have a chance sometime, uh, we'll have that discussion on the the whole mess uh, with the Big Ten expansion. And it's uh, yeah. it's just some of it's going to be fun. Playing, going out west and playing these big schools and having them come to Rutgers, you know, USC or UCLA, whatever. That's gonna okay, but still, I mean, it's it's just strange and it's interesting. Uh, I, I know you don't want to dive too much into it, but I mean, money wise, who cares? You just get the money. Rutgers can't be in a better situation than they're in right now, and that's that's the best way to look at it. Um, is it going to be tough to compete? It's got a little. It's gotten a lot tougher now. Uh, or it's going to get a lot tougher now. But you're gonna have money, and it, I'd rather be in the conference than out of the conference. Like True. say, uh, look at the ACC; they're falling apart a little bit. Yep. Uh, Pac-12's still a conference, <laughs> yeah, for of, now, kind of. right? Yeah. So, I'd rather be in it than uh, out of it. So that's yeah. always a good time. And no divisions next year. That's to be determined now with the two new additions. So it was removed originally, but now. There's there's a rumor that it might come back based on the fact that they added uh, Oregon and Washington. So what, 
We'll wait and see. So I, that's I actually – so there's four right now, four Pac-12 <clears throat> teams coming in? Yep, four okay. Pac-12 coming in next year and four going to the Big 12 as well. So the Pac-12 is down to four. <laughs> and we basically got four of the best Big 12 teams uh, – Pac-12 teams, excuse me. Yeah, no, they have, they had, Big 10 had their, their pick for the most yeah. part, so that's the nice part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, it's going to be – well, let's see how the season goes. They got off to a good start last year. It didn't matter. So it is about the long and, – and really most importantly, I think, like we said at the very beginning, it's about watching Gavin Wimsett develop – and if he can, and it can look something like the quarterback that we were hoping we were getting when we uh, when we when 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 we recruited him, then um, mm-hmm. I do think we have a much better chance, and, and probably will be a bowl team. But still, that's a big ask. So, yeah, it's tough. This conference, like I said before, it's extremely tough, and um, I don't. It's not changing anytime soon. So, yeah. just got to keep developing guys. And while I know you might not see it in wins and losses, there's definitely progress being yes. made overall, and you can see it in recruiting rankings at the very least. And we'll uh, keep checking out the night report. Again, rutgers.rivals.com. We'll have a link in the description area of this video so you can check that out. We've had the ticker running with your uh, with your info in there as well. Got it on your Wait. on your name tag there too. So uh, your next show, when's, when's that going to be? Uh, we recorded about a half hour before this one. So oh. <laughs> it will be out as soon as, um, as soon as I hang up here and do all the – the, the funny business with oh, all the screens perfect. and this and that so it takes about an hour but um it'll be out the, today excellent uh can't wait to tune in as i always do richie great job keep up the good work uh for our uh, rutgers fans because that's important for us to be tuned into what's going on with the football and basketball teams and uh, really appreciate your effort yeah no problem thanks for having thanks, me again. Rich.